Assalamu alaikum, Sayyidi. Wa alaikum salam, Allah. Thank you so much for these teachings. They are of immense benefit, but there is so much to learn, absorb, and remember. How can one remember the guidance at every moment of difficulty? Yeah, through the practices, one by one we start, and this is not the remembering in the brain. Once you start this, the path and begin to meditate and do your tafakkur, then it being burned onto the heart and the heart remembers. The heart is the hard drive, not the head. So these practices when they do their tafakkur and their contemplation begin to burn that light and reality into their heart. Because the shaykh is not talking from notes, so how is he retrieving this information? Means that when the heart is opened, that's the reality of the internet, right? Where did the internet come from? Why Allah gave us the… for dunya understanding the internet. An internet means that everything is connected by a, a net, a web. And Allah is teaching for us, all your hearts are connected. That's why if you kill one as if you killed all. All the souls are connected. In that room where you're sitting for example, 50 people, those 50 lights are all over and diffused into each other. Means everything is connected. Every human and every soul is all interconnected upon this earth. The light of one soul crosses the light of another soul of many souls. So it means everything's interconnected and through the world of light you can enter into these hearts and retrieve the information of these hearts depending upon what level programmer you are. If you're amateur you can barely retrieve your information. But if Allah make you an advanced programmer what happens? You have access to all information. That means that Allah give them an encryption code that they can enter all hearts, all souls. This is what these technologies are Allah showing to us in our dunya. It's a matter of building your light, building your spirituality and then Allah raising your encryption and raising your ability to access light. So through our spiritual practices the heart becomes more open, more open. And then the heart begins to retrieve these informations from heavenly sources inshaAllah. That's why our path is based on watching and safeguarding the holy heart. Don't just give it to anyone and don't waste it on anything because if the heart becomes contaminated it's like having a virus in your hard drive. You can't do anything with your computer if a virus has overtaken your heart. The concept of the virus is a parasite that comes into the computer to overtake the functionality of the computer. As soon as a virus comes it sends emails that you didn't want to send. It goes and cancels programs you didn't want to cancel. That's the same thing with shaitan is doing into the hearts. He's not letting the person to meditate, he's not letting them to have the love of Prophet and That's why when somebody talks like, oh why do you have to love so much the Prophet Oh, because you have a virus in you and that shaitan inside you is not allowing you to understand this process. As soon as a virus enters it overtakes the person and their faculties are no longer theirs, their ears are not theirs, their eyes are not theirs, their hands are not theirs. So this whole process is about opening the heart, meditating, contemplating and allow the shaykhs to begin to reflect into the heart the light of Sayyidina Muhammad which we said in the, the talk before is the light of La ilaha illallah reflecting to Muhammadun Rasulullah The more that light enters in the more it kills the virus and pushes the virus out. So they say, oh yeah I have such a love now for Prophet I have such a respect for the companions, the Ahlul Bayt and all because there's no viruses. And whatever virus is trying to come in is quickly being killed by the salawats, the practices is antivirus. So instead of signing up for McGaffey or all these companies, you sign up for Naqshbandiya, for an antivirus security system, right? So you attend the zikrs, you do the awrads 
Now you have an antivirus system working within our being, continuously going into the heart and looking for what is incorrect in your understanding. Why the shaitans don't want people wearing taweez? Well because then they can really attack somebody with the virus. Why they don't want the love of Prophet Well after we described all of this reality you can imagine why they don't want it. So they can occupy the heart and they can overtake the human head and those whom have been overtaken you see them now looking like lizards. Lizards with all these markings on their body people see them as lizards and those whom they're Ahlul Basira they actually see them as reptiles. Where they, they have a vision or a dream or all sorts of different comments are coming, I, oh, I saw this personality that everyone sees on TV was a snake, was literally a snake and the, the, the skin was reptile movement of their flesh was no longer flesh was like a reptilian animal. So th these markings that these people are doing they're showing what they've given themselves to and the danger of that. So alhamdulillah shall address us, protect us, bless us, bless our family and our children and our communities inshaAllah. Deep uh, subject inshaAllah for those whom don't understand, don't worry. Somebody had sent a question to us that, how do we know when the ears are opening from Sifat al-Sami al-Fasir that these are the people whom live a life of, we hear and we obey and we try our best to follow the example of the teachings, the way, the understanding and then putting the teachings actually into practice, that we're practicing what's being taught. And when you know that your Sifat al-Sami is opening, the one whom hears, Allah's attribute of hearing is when you're understanding the talks. If you're hearing and Allah describes they have ears but they don't hear, means that it's just noise for them, it's not something they understand. Because the understanding has to hear but they actually hear with their heart. So we think the hearing is here because the ears but the actual hearing is here, that their soul is, is comprehending because they clean, they wash. They try their best to follow what they can follow, they write and when they're writing it's opening a reality within their being, it's dressing their being and their kitab, as a result they're hearing in their heart. And like a laser it's going in, going in, going in and they begin to comprehend and that's what's important is a sign of comprehension that they're comprehending the teachings. And to each a different degree, some whom their, their, their sifat of hearing is strong, they hear at much higher levels. They hear that and then more and deeper and deeper and again to everybody's ability. So we have students whom are doctors, they're going to hear relative to maybe medicine and a cellular level, medical level, whatever their predisposition they understand. Somebody will hear through programming if they're programmers and they begin to understand, oh my god the code is like this and that when these, these technologies are like this. So Allah begin to give them a depth of understanding into what their predisposition of what they are trained in or what they understood if they're biologists and they understand it through the biology. So alhamdulillah is Allah's great and expands everyone's understanding to their levels, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Sayyidi, there's some hadith mentioning the shaking of Allah's throne. Where does that come in where Sayyidi described the reality of the throne and Wahajjuk al Kareem? Is it related? The shaking of Allah's throne? I would imagine that's symbolic of, of grabbing the attention of the holy face of Prophet Because the… remember these are 
<clears throat> levels of darajat and understanding to, to actually feel that there's a throne, a chair in which God sits, we've said this is, is not. It's, it's not literal but figurative. That there is no chair that can contain the Creator because He created it. So He can't sit on something that He creates and then that creation would then be holding the Divine. So this is not something and that's more of anthropomorphism, a sect of people whom began to feel that God was something of a human nature and began to make all of these literal. So when Allah says, my hand is upon your hand, Allah has no hand. But what Allah is saying is that my power, because the hand represents support and power, like my, God, my hand is behind you means that Allah is denoting that my qudra, my power on your hand and that my support is with you. So now that they're giving much more understanding in the throne, then we're understanding that that which shakes the throne is the holy face of Prophet and that those attributes are been ignited. So when awliyaullah who are always under the nazar of that holy face means that that holy face is, is so… I don't know the word but full nazar of Prophet would be on that munajat, on that du'a and that prayer. Means the, these awliya who would pray and I would imagine that the whole face of Prophet was there in their munajat and in their du'as. Means all the seven attributes opened upon them so that those prayers were accepted and blessed and dressed. Now that we understand more and more of what the Divine the Throne and that reality. <clears throat> We said that, that those seven points are the same seven points of a chair, the four legs, the two armrests and what they call the tongue of the seat. So the most important part of the chair is what? The tongue because it denotes who's sitting there. That one sitting there is the one speaking and the one on authority. So means from the power of that holy face, the most powerful attribute then is that tongue. That tongue is the tongue what we call liwal hamd, the flag of praise. The most praised one and the one whom praises the most. And that tongue is a tongue that speaks holy Qur'an and is the, is the location and the fountainhead of where Qur'an is continuously emanating and being spoken. So imagine then the immensity, immensity of that reality because it's not physical, we're talking about the world of light. <clears throat> and everything perishes but that holy face. And that's why awliya they don't care for heaven and preoccupied with hell, all that they want is to be with the holy face. InshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Sayyidi, how can we work around the thoughts, nafs in salah? While I'm in the prayer, do you have any tips to say or be during these times of straying? Yeah, you have to do more muraqabah because the shaitan getting too close, as a result he distracts the believer from their salah and they start to have all sorts of waswas, every type of thought because he's coming too close, he's coming like right next to their ears and talking to them. So it means that the sign of the energy is not strong enough yet, lots of durood sharif lots of the, these practices, lots of their tafakkur and muraqabah. And that's what we said, you don't pray as yourself. When you begin to do your muraqabah and your, your connection, you're asking that I was nothing. I wish I was nothing and as a result of wishing that they're nothing, then they vanish and they ask for the light of the shaykh to dress them, that you come and sit in the zikr 
and I'm nothing, I'll be in your pocket. That you come to do my salah and I'll be in your pocket because I don't know how to pray, I don't know what power to pray with. So we learn to annihilate ourselves to be nothing so that that energy comes and their light comes and we vanish. And as a result that prayer becomes very powerful and goes to where they're going. When we learn how to do that then we can pray under the tajalli of these holy souls. So imagine doing sujood where Imam Ali is in sujood because the dress will come upon the servant and take them to where they're making their sujood. So it means that to pray at my station or nothing but to be nothing and to ask that dress me from your station and your light and let us pray where you pray and that you make the du'a and, and that you lead me. It's a part of the whole surrendering, InshaAllah. Mm -hmm. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam. Uh, as a new convert I've been so consumed with learning ritual and prayers and have not paid attention to charity. Thank you for this life-changing teaching service. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Allah bless you. <clears throat> These are the systems in which Allah has, has given to us to succeed <clears throat> and that so many hadiths and so many all the Holy Qur'an and so many hadiths that describe how much charity and zakat and, and uh, sadaqah keep away affliction. Though just at a basic understanding it keep away so much difficulty and so much affliction and that Allah deflect and, and reduce many hardships by means of support and that's, that's the way of realities. Then the way of faith is that what type of support and how it opens. And that's when we gave the example of uh, one of the awliya of past of uh, Sayyidina Balul that he was selling in front of the king and all of the king's court little matchbooks of houses and telling them for one dirham you can buy this. And they said, okay what we're going to get if we give you this one dirham? He said, you're going to get a house in paradise. How many people would believe that? Right? But Allah is the one who gives reward. So when Allah's servant, because a real servant of Allah is making that statement, Allah is the one who gives the reward because why Allah needs anything for a house in paradise? It didn't cost Allah anything. But what Allah wanted was people to have faith. So when somebody comes up to them and says that, you know, of course my faith is whatever you say. A one dirham, alhamdulillah here's your one dirham, it's a sadaqah, it's a charity, it's a zakat, what it's going to take away from me. And he's stating that I'm going to get a house in paradise, alhamdulillah, I, I will take five of them, what does, it, what does it mean for anything? But it is a station of faith that people have. And as a result of doing that then they witnessed from visions from the angels that they received a house in paradise for that exchange. So it means that's the whole secret of tariqah. The shaykhs have many things that when you support and you participate you don't know what Allah is giving because you believed that as a result of your belief Allah is going to give to the servant. And the most important belief is in the way of Prophet If you have a choice about going to a regular place or somewhere where Muhammadiyoon are gathering, well where do you think the barakah would be? With the Muhammadiyoon because that support, that effort is going in the way of the tariqah and the way of the love and the ishq of Sayyidina Muhammad So alhamdulillah it just requires people to have a faith and a heart that is alive. And as a result of those people immense barakahs because everything they're doing, they're doing with such a barakah that Allah is just overflowing blessings upon these people, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. 
Uh, I'm still reading the Timeless Reality book slowly, somewhat confused. Can you just clarify, is it okay to connect to living sheikhs or only Barzakh? No, the, you have to have a living shaykh to connect with. That's the whole concept is you, you need somebody who you hear, you listen and you follow. And as a result of listening and, and following, it can challenge your nafs and can discipline the person into right and wrong, left and right. So that's essential and that, that person becomes so familiar with you that you're listening, you're hearing, you're even understanding the, the system and mannerisms so that it becomes recorded live within your soul. You hear that mannerism and that voice within your, your being. So no definitely you need a, a living shaykh, a living guide and that guide then teaches you muraqabah how to connect with them, how to connect with their soul, how to perfect the light that coming and then that world of light begins to open for the servant. So most definitely it's the living so that they can reach into that realm and perfect. That's why all these talks then, then by doing that they can hear the talk and begin to practice the hearing. That I'm hearing his teachings and I'm listening. I'm closing my eyes and I'm meditating so that my spiritual vision can begin to open. And I live a life of khidmat and service. You get a shirt, get a letter from Fatima Zara, go out and get food. You're working hard and busy, click on one of the buttons to support a well, to support the mauli, to support the qurban, support the sadaqah. So many ways for people to participate and, and, and make everything to become stronger and stronger and then Allah take away difficulty and, and send blessings upon people's lives inshaAllah, their families, their children and communities inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi. Walaykum As Salaam wa Is there a reason that this month is more emotional, more crying and tenderness? May Allah bless you and dress you with the Muhammadan lights. Yeah, we said it's the mirror, so it means that from one and the Divinely Presence is reflecting to the one means that the lights of Malakut are now reflecting to the mulk and that Allah is bringing the souls that are on this guidance and on this tour towards the heart of Prophet from Ramadan to be purified and brought to nothingness, from 10 to be dressed by the throne and 11 becomes an audience because now 12 will be the pilgrimage and the dress and the finale of the journey. So eleven is then the reflection of the Divine upon the light of Prophet and from Prophet to his nation and especially the khawas and the elite of the nation whom they are inspired to very high levels of understanding and realities. So these are more and more dress upon them, those whom are practicing and, and doing their, their efforts that they can, then they should be feeling the immense love and grace and, and majestic beauty because Allah described, what's hidden inside will come out. So those whom love, they have an immense love inside of them. And if Allah begin to blossom that love to bring it out, then alhamdulillah they can feel the presence of the malakut. So the heavens are within us in the soul. The mulk is the physicality and malakut is the soul. If Allah wants us to feel the heavenly kingdom, it's a matter of the soul coming out because you have the kingdom within you, you have all of those lights within us. It's a matter of coming out and the physicality to feel it and be dressed and blessed by it inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Sayyidi, how to pray for conditions in your life to change that are stopping your progression in tariqah? Allah doesn't change a condition of a people until they change what's within themselves. So there must be something within ourselves that has to change otherwise the condition remains. The condition is what, what is, is purifying the individual. 
If they choose to purify themselves with their regiment and their practices then Allah doesn't need to purify them by outside people. So everything is, is based on that reality so Allah doesn't change a condition of a people until they change themselves. So we'll look at the news and everyone say, we want a great leader, we want a pious leader, we want a pious leader. Why would Allah send people a pious leader when they themselves are crooks? Doesn't work that way. So it means until the people become good then Allah will put a righteous leader upon them because they change themselves and then Allah changes their condition. If they don't change themselves then what they're gonna get? They're gonna get people who come to now cut the power off every day, not pay the bills, to torture, to kill, to do everything because it's a reflection of who they are. Because you can't see inside so Allah said, well, look outside. So this has a very deep understanding. When people are protesting and, oh we don't like this leader, we don't like that leader, mm, well, you have to look to yourself and say, I don't think you deserve anything better. Until you purify and perfect yourself you get what you get. So then same for an individual that, oh well, all these conditions on the outside, why is it like that? Then Allah says, go inside and clean. If you can clean your inside then I don't need outside people to clean you. That's why then they understood, they said, oh I don't need outside people continuously tormenting me, I will clean myself, clean myself, make my istighfar, do my zikrs, do my, my tafakkur, do my contemplation, I will clean myself, I don't need somebody to come and, and continuously scrub me. So Allah is going to send people to scrub people. If they decide that, no I don't need that, I'll, I'll clean myself, thank you Ya Rabbi, that's okay, I'll, I'll, I'll scrub myself. I'll put conditions to be harder upon myself, I'll abstain myself, I'll do all these things to myself. Then Allah said, now you're changing yourself and I will change all the condition around you. And that's why the, the Ya Wahab, Ya Wahab, Ya Wahab, Ya Musabib al Asbab, Ya Mufatiha Abwab, Ya Muqalib al Qulubi wal Absar. Ya Dalil al Muttahidin, Ya Ghiyat al Muttahidin, Ya Hayyu, Ya Qayyu, Ya Dhu Jalali wa Ikram, Ufawud Amri in Allah, in Allahu Basirun bi ibad. That that dua is exactly for that understanding. That you see my condition, Ya Rabbi, you see my condition, and I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying to, to perfect and see what I'm doing wrong. And there are people who struggle against themselves. If they don't then Allah makes them because Allah still wants them to achieve the station. Allah makes then other people to come and agitate them. So inshaAllah we do it ourselves is better, inshaAllah. Say that was the next question. I've been getting cursed at by random people for no reason whatsoever. What can I do to protect myself? Change your condition, <laughs> alhamdulillah. Because Allah wants something changed. You think if you avoid it, you, you're, you just take the test. It's not like school where you just show, don't show up for your test. Allah's system is if you don't show up for your test, your test shows up for you. <laughs> it comes knocking at your door, hi, where are Allah's test on you now? So it's not like you sleep in and you can let it go away. It doesn't go away, it actually starts to come after you. And each time it comes after you, he's much harder, much harder. So whatever your fate is in life you face it, you say, okay if this is my character that Allah is trying to point out I have to go and do it, I have to fix it, I have to take care of myself. Allah will make a whole world to come after a person. Everywhere they go somebody will be aggressively against them until they understand, no you have to change, you have to change. If Allah wants a change it's, it's going to happen so that, that's the, the concept of meditating. When someone meditates they would ask that in their meditation. They would connect with the shaykh and say, why is this happening? Well obviously it's happening because Allah wants some change within you. So if you don't make the change the outside world will make the change. I've had people who ran away, oh we don't need a shaykh, we don't need a shaykh and Allah sent a very difficult condition in their life. That difficulty is now their shaykh. They have to wash it, clean it, carry it and take care of it and that's an immense difficulty that became the person's shaykh. So everyone's going to have a shaykh, if it has a beard and talks nicely to you 
or life's conditions. That will be your shaykh, that condition. InshaAllah. Uh, assalamu alaikum Sayyidi Nurjan. Wa alaikum assalam. Uh, when people die and they come in our dreams, how can you explain they are still in the world of grave or world of paradise? Yeah, I think we have in timeless reality, so you have to buy timeless reality. Paradise is not open, right? Anyone who dies, that's why when the shaykhs, they, they go for seclusion, they enter the state of death and was shown to them, paradise is not open, it's like locked. Your life is on this earth, so it's a hayat al-barzaq, it's the life of, of the grave. Now if your actions were bad, your grave is very restricted. If it's very bad, your grave is punishment. If your actions were good, decent, there was a minor punishment and then release. Once they're released, if they didn't achieve a state of light, there's no growing. So they roam the earth, what you call spirits and ghosts. Because they weren't bad enough to be punished and they weren't good enough to, to be elevated with their light. So they roam the earth like ghosts and as a portion of their torment is they just roam around looking at all those whom they love and they can only see their life and they can't participate, they can't warn and they can't help. So that would be a horrific torment, you know, to see how difficult family conditions are and, and, and difficulty that are happening to loved ones and that you can't intervene, you can't do anything. So that has its own difficulty. Those whom are not at that and Allah freed them and they had piety and belief, then Allah as a part of their freedom allows their soul to visit their loved ones. And as a result of visiting then people have dreams of a loved one and, oh I saw the condition of this person, they were in good shape, they were in this, so they're conveying that condition. If the souls were even higher then those loved ones can begin to communicate because based on the level of their purity and piety they begin to communicate. That's how you understand what madad is. If your grandmother can talk to you in the grave in your dreams what do you think about a shaykh? Why do you think your grandmother is more powerful than your shaykh? Right? Everyone has experience of, of relatives who are good and, and they communicate with them. But that's the whole concept Allah is showing us. That imagine those whom are awliya where they're very free and not only that but Allah is calling them to be of service. Go to them, help them, clean them, guide them, all the different requirements. So of course they're free. And as a result of being free they come, they give guidance, they give teaching, they give inspirations. You sit and, and do your madad, they be right in front of you teaching and sending fires into the heart. That's what the way is, is the whole way is built on these understandings. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifoom, salaamun al mursaleen, walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa, bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. <laughs>